Welcome to Creation in the 21st Century. I'm your host, Carl Ball, founder and director of the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. This is a program designed to give you actual scientific data supporting the truth. Creation in the 21st Century. I think we should be able to give a reason for the hope that lies within us with meekness and fear. And there's an emphasis with meekness and fear. We are not to be arrogant about the truth we know, and we're not to despise those who are not as fortunate, nor are we to feel inferior to those who have an advanced version of the truth, because each, to each is allotted a measure of the gift of God. And we have guests today who have been allotted a tremendous measure in God's gifts. The title of the program is Reach for the Stars. For decades, I have been intrigued by, and to some degree indirectly associated with, the American space program. And that space program, of course, has affected all of us. Not only have we reached the moon and returned safely, but the entire program required the miniaturization of technology so that every time we have surgery, optical or otherwise, every time we do a resonance procedure, Every one of these, one way or another, is a spin-off benefit of the American space program. So it has benefited mankind. Last, to my knowledge, the last expenditure exceeded $25 billion. And some have said that's uh, money ill-spent. I don't think so. The entire human race has benefited by our observation of the fields, the chemistry, the growth processes of remote areas, deserts and sands, we can actually, from space, due to our space program and the satellites in place, we can monitor caravans, we can monitor camels, we can monitor growth rates, we can monitor the ebb and flow of the seasons and the water and the migration of various fowl and flock as well. So the space program has tremendous benefits. I've been intrigued for a long while. In fact, some years ago, I was associated with a very fine pad foreman uh, whose name is um, Mr. Baldwin. George Baldwin, uh, I often approached and I said, now, Deacon, uh, you need to get me on one of those space flights. And I was much younger then. And uh, he would say, well, I'm working on it. Now, of course, that was a joke between the two of us, but he would go down to the Cape and launch various uh, instrumentation like uh, he was in charge of the launch of the monkey that flew in space. He was in charge of the launch of Skylab, etc. And uh, so finally, he came to me and he said, uh, I've been applying, but I found the reason we can't get you on one of those uh, space programs and in a space capsule. And I said, what's the reason? He said, we've got a weight problem. <laughs> well, that was real nice. And, of course, I never would have qualified and never actually applied. But I have been intrigued so much so that NASA permitted me to have, with their official verification, a special ball from the Gemini program. It was a little titanium ball that in the first Gemini overflight flew directly over Suva, Fiji, in the South Pacific. I have dear friends in Fiji. And the late Governor General, his name was Ratu Sir George Dockenbau, was a personal friend of mine. Lady Dockenbau and uh, their children are still personal friends of mine. And I had the privilege, with the permission of NASA and the United States government, I had the privilege of giving to Sir George Dockenbau for the peoples of Fiji that little titanium ball that flew in the space capsule as a part of the buoyancy of that capsule that flew over Suva, Fiji some decades ago. So I've been vitally interested in the space program. Today's first guest has been more than vitally interested and involved in the space program. I want to welcome a dear and personal friend Clyde McGee, aerospace engineer. Clyde, it is a delight to have you on the program today. Certainly, certainly my pleasure. You and I are fast friends. Yes. And we have a lot of uh, 
ideas and concepts in common. Yes. Would you follow me for just a moment? This man has done some incredible things, and of course, we have all been affected by the space program, and we've been affected by the space itself. Here we have an envisionment of the, uh, the moon, right there. Uh, we have an envisionment of a number of Earth's uh, satellites that you were involved in, and we have an envisionment of our solar system and activities going on even in deep space. Clyde, I understand I have a photograph of you explaining to a king what is going on in SINCOM. How were you associated with SINCOM? I had the opportunity of working for Hughes Aircraft Company who developed the SINCOM spacecraft. This came about for, through NASA, Goddard Space Flight Center, back in the early, uh, late 1961. And I was called back from the field at that point in time to head up their field and mission operations group at that point in time. So you headed the field and operations yes. missions group yes. and the launch. Yes, right, yes. Primarily responsible for launch operations on the first 17 satellites and then the overall mission operations on the next 26 I was involved with. That is absolutely incredible. Here is a man who has helped to make history. Uh, you had a background in engineering, physics, and chemistry, and were specifically qualified. They called you, they selected you specifically for this project management. Is that yes. correct? Yes, yes. And I uh, had a degree in electrical engineering and had been in the field for Hughes Aircraft Company for eight years at that point in time. And this was an entirely new program, new satellite, to put a satellite up 22,300 miles above the Earth synchronized with the rotation of the earth and as a result stationary with respect to the earth and this had never been done before and i felt so fortunate that i had been selected god's timing for this this particular job here. well in our reach for the stars god prepared a man and in a moment i'm going to introduce another guest to emphasize that god prepared you uniquely for this work now let's explain for the audience again you say geosynchronous stationary orbit. Yes. Why would that be so important? Well, this puts a satellite up 22,300 miles above the Earth, and these satellites are put in a plane coincident with the equatorial plane. The satellite is actually moving at over 6,500 miles an hour. However, it's moving at the same rate that the Earth is rotating, so as a result, it appears to be stationary with respect to the Earth. Now, prior to the time that the satellites went up, your transoceanic cable was not, uh, did not have a wide enough bandwidth in order to get uh, television directly from overseas or any of that nature. But the satellite, putting the satellite up, it put it up to such an altitude, it was stationary with respect to the Earth, and we could get pictures almost instantaneously from overseas. And this made the the backyard antenna possible here and most of your cable television at this point in time. Oh, I want to emphasize that again. This man was the project foreman for the launch. Did you help build any of these uh, satellites? Some of the testing and some of the initial uh, uh, hardware construction, yes. This man was responsible uh, for the launch, the physical coordination, I think you had a couple of superiors who figured out how to oh, do yes, it, yes. and you were the one who actually performed it. Yes. What did he perform? Now, this is extremely important. Call a friend while I'm saying this. My heart's skipping a beat or two while I'm talking about this. This is the man that physically launched the satellites and put them in the appropriate orbit so that we could have global communication this telecast is enjoyed worldwide at this moment. This man is responsible for that. Clyde, I would not be able to speak to the millions of people throughout the United States at this moment and around the world with the truth of creation and the application in the biblical record to the gospel of Jesus Christ were it not for the work that you have done. This was God having me at the right place at the right time. And using the right person to do it. All right. I want to thank you for helping me get the truth, the scientific truth of creation, and the truth of the gospel around the world. 